There's no denying the fact that Bamboo Lab creates some of the most beginner-friendly, easy-to-use, out-of-the-box experiences of any 3D printer manufacturer. They really shook the market with their lineup, especially with the integrated multicolor solutions that seem to work pretty much flawlessly every time, albeit with a fair amount of wastage. That aside, they've kept their foot on the gas with an all-new, all-singing and dancing multi-tool solution the hefty Bamboo Lab H2D. While there are many new features to cover, the H2D comes as both a stock printer and a laser combo. The stock H2D can be converted to a laser cutter and both machines share the same 3D printer capabilities, although in this video we'll just be looking at the 3D printing side of things. But even then, boy is this thing big and heavy too. Although in typical Bamboo Lab fashion, they've clearly thought about the unpacking process in some depth here, and by following the correct steps, it's a pretty easy procedure, with plenty of protective layering hugging all sides of the unit. Once out of the box, as well as all the plastic wrapping, remove all the pieces of packing tape as well as all the film covering the glass panels. And then the top glass cover. In order to remove all the foam protecting various components throughout transportation. Note that if you've picked up the combo package with the AMS unit, it will be packed securely inside the print chamber, which is a great space saver, and the removal of a couple of screws, all conveniently highlighted with a red circle making them easy to spot, releases it completely. We'll come back to this in just a moment. But overall I have to say, it's packed really, really well no damage anywhere whatsoever and everything's still firmly intact. That just leaves a couple of retaining screws to remove since these secure the moving parts together, all really easy. Bamboo Lab do throw in a small tool kit which actually comes in really handy even after the initial setup, well until you get a more comprehensive kit at least. And with that we're pretty much unpacked and ready to go, no building, no stress, just a super easy process. Anyways, from here it's back to removing more plastic from the AMS so that it can sit on the top glass panel and connects directly into the rear of the printer, alongside a single spool holder that slots into the side and feeds the second nozzle. And with that said and done, we're ready to finally insert the security key and the power cord before powering up the printer. The easy setup doesn't stop when it comes to firing up the system either, this thing has sensors everywhere, so the setup process is pretty much automated and takes a good half hour or so where the printer tests and configures itself. This also limits the opportunity for you to make any mistakes, it'll take care of pretty much the entire process, such as figuring out the offsets between nozzles, something I wouldn't have even thought to check in the first instance, it's completely foolproof. Note the unit is on squishy rubber feet to add some dampening so the body of the printer may wobble slightly, but that's completely normal. Nevertheless, if sensors don't do it, there's multiple cameras incorporated too, under the tall head looking at the nozzles, a bird's eye camera looking down onto the heat bed, even a live view camera that can look at the barcodes on the nozzles to check which ones are installed. Seriously, it's mind blowing. So anyways, once you've made it through the initial setup, you're pretty much ready to print straight away. Bear in mind the H2D is a large machine, so you'll need plenty of space for it, but that also gives us a larger 350 by 320 by 325 mm total build volume 2, which is always a nice to have. This is, in essence, the deluxe big brother of the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon 3D printer. It's a fully enclosed printer with an aluminum and steel chassis, plastic sides and glass windows, all very sturdy and solid. The build quality here is top notch, everything feels premium. The 5 inch touchpad is an upgraded version of the one found on the X1 C2 and it's nice, bright, easy to see and use with great touch sensitivity and an easy to use menu system, no issues there at all. Filament loading and unloading is still a breeze when handled by the machine, you only push around 2cm into the feeder and it automatically slurps it into the system. When using bamboo spools the machine uses sensors that read the RFID tags in the spool, so no need to update the machine on the type or filament colour, just like before it does all of that for you. 
So there are many new features here, way too many to fit into a single video review. But the star of the show has to be that dual nozzle design, both being on the same hot end and both being the same size. You can't mix sizes, not yet anyways. This isn't a new concept, but it's the best implementation of such a design to date. They're easy to change too, thanks to the clasp and magnet design we first saw with the A1. All the wiring remains on the actual tool head. In essence, the two nozzles work together to print two colours without waste, or printing two different materials at the same time. Each nozzle has its own Bowden tube, with the most common setup being one connecting to the AMS, which feeds into the right nozzle, and the second to a single spool feeding into the left. There's even a little flow blocker, which is a little arm that sits beneath the non-printing nozzle tip. So when the left nozzle is done printing, it will move up and the flow blocker will switch sides. The right nozzle sits stationary on the tool head. This stops filament oozing out during a print, and coupled with the nozzle cleaning system, it does work really well. Sticking with filament for the moment then, Bamboo also improved their signature automatic material system for the H2D as well. It's still a four spool model, but now with a heater and vents, allowing it to dry your filament. The vent automatically opens during drying cycles to release damp air and can remain closed to maintain a dry environment during storage or printing. The dryer does not operate during printing though, and instead depends on a tight seal and a packet of desiccant to keep your material cosy. When you set up the drying function, the screen will even give you the option of rotating the filament while drying, which is a nice added touch. There is an optional single spool AMS HT model, which is a separate purchase, and heats up a little more than the AMS, as well as incorporating a bypass allowing you to feed soft TPU or gritty carbon fibre without going through the feeder motor. Instead, it simply freewheels and allows the tool head to pull the filament through. There are a couple of other developments, like the ceramic coated tips for longer life, and it's easier to get to the PTFE tubes in case you need to remove any filaments stuck in them. Although saying that, note the older generation AMS units can still be used here too. In fact, the H2D can use up to 4 AMS units and 8 AMS HT units simultaneously. That's up to 24 spools. The Bamboo Studio Slicer is just as easy to use as before, it's the same software used for all Bamboo's printers, although the H2D has an extra option you won't see on other models. Filament Saving Mode. When you slice a model, the slicer can calculate which colour or material to place in the left nozzle in order to save the most filament. This is because there's no need to purge the left nozzle, and this can amount to quite a fair bit of saved filament over the course of a single print job. A really nice feature. You can bypass this of course and use the custom mode instead, which allows you to rearrange the spools as you would like them. Otherwise, everything else is pretty much the same. It was intuitive enough to use before, and it's just as intuitive now. So, depending upon your model and the filament being used to produce it, the printer will automatically open and close its vents mechanically in order to regulate airflow and keep the chamber at the most suited temperature. It even has a rear filter built right in for working with more toxic materials, especially considering the nozzles can heat up to 350 degrees for those more advanced and hard plastics. I'm also pleased to see the H2D loses the carbon fibre rods of its predecessors, opting for the torsional stability of a linear rail for the printer's x-axis movement. Saying that, although the bed states a 350mm width because of the way the nozzles are situated with their offset, you can't actually get that size with a single nozzle print. It's more 325mm across the X, since the right nozzle can't reach the last 20mm or so to the left side and vice versa. So the very edges of the plate are kind of reserved for the nozzle on that respective side. While you can work around this limitation with some tweaking of colours and nozzles used, it's still something to bear in mind if you're into larger prints. Talking of larger prints, I've started with an essential print for this and most other Bamboo Lab printers, a purge waste bin. You'll certainly be wanting this around the back of the printer to collect all that filament purge waste that will no doubt accumulate when we move to multicoloured models. Note that while the printer is relatively quiet, with the main noise coming from the exhaust fans, it does seem to shake a lot. Thankfully, the squishy feet dampen the movement, and it doesn't seem to affect the quality of the 3D printed model. 
as we can see from the quality of the purge bin, which came out really nice, as does the time lapse that gets stored to an inserted USB drive. It's pretty good quality too, 1080p to be precise. So with the first print out of the way, it's time to try a print using both nozzles and using black and white filament, so one extreme to the other, just to see how clean the print would switch between colours. And this Panda model included with the printer seemed a good place to start. Not only would it show cleanliness between colour changes, but also accuracy, considering the model has moving parts. And it's here we can see the way the dual nozzles work together. No filament purges, other than the purge tower of course, and a nice quick change between each colour, with that flow blocker moving between each to prevent any rogue filament touching the actual model. It really is quite intriguing to watch, and once complete it's actually produced a really nice print here. I see no colour bleed between the black or white either. A really nice clean print. Probably one of the cleanest multicoloured prints I've produced to date in fact. So onto another single colour print here and switch to a smooth sheet this time round, a model with lots of small recesses requiring support material. Although to be fair I think I could have got away without using supports at all here, but saying that support generation was minimal, much lower than other slices I've tried to print this on and truth be told I've tried this on the Prusa Core 1 in the past and it created a rather unclean print but here on the H2D it printed perfectly first time with minimal supports, a really nice print that came out impressively well. Onto another multicolour print then, again one I've done on the Core 1 previously and came out great and it's come out great here too. All the details are there, it performed well on the steep overhangs and the colour swaps are nice with little if any colour bleed, no issues at all. Of course, we've only taken a look at the 3D printing aspect of this machine, it can also cut and engrave too, and while many in the 3D printing community disregard the notion of a 3D printer that can also cut and engrave, small business owners will love a machine that can make 3D printed art, practical parts, and cut out price tags or make neat wooden ornaments and display pieces. It can't do as much as a dedicated machine in each application area, but it's certainly enough for many to scratch that laser engraving itch. So it's clear that Bamboo Lab continues to innovate, thinking outside the box and surprising everyone. While the H2D may not be the 3D printer you are asking for, it's definitely worth considering if you love crafting. Even if, like me, you're not interested in the laser combo, the stock 3D printer is well worth it for the extra size and its ability to save some extra filament, as well as all the other benefits that come with that dual nozzle design, which all worked seamlessly in producing some very high quality 3D models.